to win a brand new 2022 Honda CRF 450 Works Edition for 10 bucks. Go to www.kaplancycles.com. Buy your ticket today. What do you know about the 82 RM125? Second year water cool. Thank you. Second, what else? Uh, it was With known it? to have really good rear suspension. Is, it, is this the best bike of that era in your opinion? I would think so. And when it came to uh, everybody that came up with single shock that in that year, in 81, that was the best one. I believe it had the mo the best motor too, didn't it? The 125 motor. I'm not sure about the motor. Who was racing these at NESC back then? Jimmy Meenan, right? Yeah, Meenan. Yeah. And, he, uh, he won. He won. Um, Rudnicki. Dave Rudnicki. Mayo. Greg Mayo. Yeah. They were dominating on these 82s, right? Yeah, they were. They, those were. What, those what were about the What about the AMA Nationals? Who won the AMA Nationals on the 125? I think it could have been Bomber. Can you Google real quick Suzuki AMA 125 it's National been, uh, record? Mark Barnett, Bomber. The bomber. I knew it. Why do I remember this stuff? Dude, you pulled that. I can't that remember anything else, but I can okay. remember motocross okay, stuff. <laughs> Guys, feast your eyes on the class of 82. This bike right here dominated the AMA National Circuit from 1980, 81, and 82. This bike won all three years in a row. Mark the bomber, Bar Barnett, won the 125 National Championship on this bike. Countless local and AMA championships were run from all the AMA districts of the New England Sports Committee. The local guys dominated on these bikes. Dave Rudnicki, Jim Meenan, they just cleaned up the competition. Why? Well, the full floater suspension was a new era of phenomenal suspension. The motors are absolutely rocket chips, as evidenced in my previous riding demo you just saw. This thing is just been massaged to perfection by the wizard. It's wizard tune. It's been Doc, who loves Suzuki's. He's our Probably, uh, uh, while well, he's our oldest detail, he's been here the longest. Doc is kind of has a, a, a love affair with these Suzuki's. He has an RM125 also. He gave this the full Monty detail front to back. It's got the new Hoosier tires, all new plastics, all new graphics. The original factory tank it was polished by Doc to perfection. The seat cover is beautiful. It's got the DG exhaust on there, a new gold chain. Just an absolutely stunning machine here. Um, it's been gone through top to bottom, front to back. The graphics were done by Christy Steiger. Uh, the Hoosier tires are fresh with the, with the hairy nub still on them. The fuel vent lines are new. Uh, the, the fuel lines are new. The tank was cleaned out. It's got new VP110. Uh, has a new PVL ignition in it, high performance ignition. And uh, just a kick ass original survivor with low hours. Junior, what do you want to add about this? Yeah, guys, this is a good friend of ours, Steve, repeat customer. Steve from Long Island brought this to us. He bought the bike off Facebook Marketplace, and it was a, it's a lower time bike. Uh, original side panels, uh, original uh, radiator louver here, original rear fender, original tank, really clean piece. I, I showed you guys a sticker on the front forks, but it needed a whole host of services. It, it, it needed to be gone through thoroughly, had some ignition problems, and we got it dialed in, and now it needs nothing. The bike is not for sale, uh, but man, Steve, you got yourself uh, quite the investment here. This is a this is a keeper for it, sure. It's stunning. It, this you just don't see the 125s because most of them were owned by young guys who had all the time in the world and they rode the wheels right off of them. Most of them got destroyed. You just don't find original survivors with nice original wheel sets and original stickers on the forks like this. So, like I said, a wizard needed to replace ignition to put a new ignition in it. PBL electronic P ignition. They're not cheap. Yep. Uh, it completely rejected the carb, rebuilt the carb, and. Uh, 
dialed it in beautifully. It's got a new gold chain on the back, new spark plug. Um, also went through the coolant system on it, changed the coolant, um, flushed it all out. And uh, he actually rejetted it four times. And it's got a 270 main jet, a 25 pilot, uh, third clip out and a screw and a half out on the air screw. So the jetting was way off, the ignition was way off, needed new tires and sprockets and graphics, but the bones of the bike were all there. The bones were all good. So the bottom line on the, the invoice here was uh, 35 and a half hours labor. Uh, we, we repainted the, Doc repainted the engine, the uh, frame, all of the metal parts on it have been repainted or polished. Uh, the original plastics, which are the rear fender and side covers in the shrouds, uh, remarkably uh, survived. Uh, they're the original ones, which is proof that it's got fairly low hours on it. Brand new front fender, original tank's been polished by Doc. Kyle, is there anything you want to add about this? Because Kyle's our project manager. He saw this thing from, uh, from uh, the rags to riches that it is now. Yeah, I mean, when Steve brought this in to us, you know, he said, you know, do do the Kaplan special. So we did. We uh, this was a no excuses bike. We wanted it perfect, and so did Steve. So, I mean, here it is, and it it had good bones when it came here too. I mean, like Ken pointed out, you know, the the shrouds on there, that's like number one to go. You lay this bike over, that shroud's getting broken off. No no questions asked. So it, this this was a really good low hour bike to begin with. And the frame rails are pristine. The pegs are pristine. The the radiators, all those original cycle parts, indicating the low hours. And you had mentioned it has the original side covers and rear fender, correct? Yeah. Yep. Is that the original seat cover or is that a replacement? You know, I wasn't able to determine that. It it, it looks it looks pretty pretty close to. Uh, looks like a reproduction to me, but. Someday we might open the floodgates and offer these services to the public. Right now, our existing clients have got us on a six-month backlog, but we're always looking to grow. We're the largest restoration shop of vintage motorcycles in the United States right now. We just hired our 20th guy. Uh, we just got an OEM franchise that, that uh, I'm going to drop, drop the, uh, the, the bomb on that pretty soon, let you guys know some really good news. We just got a grant to restore the other buildings. We already have 65, we're a 65,000 square foot motorcycle restoration shop in museum. Uh, one of the one of a kind in, in the world really there's nothing else like this so um we have a lot of clients we're, we've got a big backlog but at some point we're going to have the team and the staff and we can start doing these for the public but this full full frame up uh reconditioning and preservation service had a 4300 hundred dollar ticket by the time we're done so it's not cheap but you can see the results are worth it and i would not have on my own accord taken this out and gone full banana sandwich on it. But I said to Junior, I said, does he want a demo? Does he want a video on this? And he said, yeah, he asked you. What did he say, Junior? He, Steve said, go full banana. So I aim to please, full banana sandwich it is. Thanks for watching, guys. God bless America.